Nothing in nature prepares us for looking at chest x-rays. But from the moment we start medical school, there is an assumption that somehow, miraculously, we can understand the x-ray world, while miracles don't happen. So in this chapter, you'll be introduced to the x-ray dimension. You'll learn about how the x-ray beam interacts with the normal and abnormal thoracic anatomical structures to produce the x-ray image. You will also learn about things like grayscale, overlap, interfaces, and shapes, all key to helping you understand the x-ray image and to build your confidence in x-ray interpretation. What will I gain from this video? After watching this video, you will know how to identify various structures in a chest x-ray based on their grayscale appearance. You will learn about the five most important grayscale densities seen on chest x-ray examinations. In our normal day-to-day -day life, when we look around us, we see color, we recognize objects, and we can predict size and shape. We perceive in 3D. Even looking at a black and white image, we can still see light and shade, shadows, relative size, depth, and perspective. Nothing in nature prepares us for the x-ray dimension. A world without color, where the normal rules for vision and visual perception do not apply. To be able to use x-rays as a clinical tool, we need to understand the difference between the x-ray grayscale image and a regular grayscale image. By understanding the x-ray dimension, you will learn what the x-ray is trying to show us, and just as importantly, you will learn what the x-ray is trying to hide from us. On a grayscale image, each pixel carries only intensity information. Images of this sort are called black and white and are composed exclusively of shades of gray, varying from black as the weakest intensity to white as the strongest. The X-ray image is similar to black and white photography in that each pixel that forms the X-ray image only carries intensity information. This intensity will depend on what happens to the X-ray beam when it travels through the body. On this enlarged segment of the X-ray, we see that the image is quite heterogeneous depending on what the anatomical structures are that the x-ray beam encounters when the image is formed. On this image we see what happens with the x-ray beam as it goes through tissues of various density. At the very top we see the x-ray beam going through less dense tissues. Because the tissue is less dense, less of the x-ray radiation is absorbed and the image is black. If on the other hand we look at more dense tissue, as the x-ray goes through the dense tissue, most of the x-ray beam will be absorbed and the resulting image will be white. How does this look like in practice? Well in the human body, if the x-ray beam encounters a very dense structure such as bone, most of the x-ray beam will be absorbed and the resulting image will be white. If, however, the x-ray beam encounters soft tissue density such as the heart, less of the x-ray beam will be absorbed and the resulting image will be gray. If, however, the x-ray beam goes through a structure that is very low in density such as lung, very little of the x-ray beam will be absorbed and the resulting image will be black. On this image we see the various possible densities that we encounter on an x-ray examination. Let's start by looking at the grayscale possibilities and we see that these range from very black to very white. On one end of the scale is air which is very black and we can identify on this x-ray, very black area, which is above the shoulders, which represents air within the room above the patient. We also recognize that there's air within the lungs. The second density that we encounter on x-rays is a grayer density, which represents fat, and we can identify fat on an x-ray in the subcutaneous tissues. The next density that we identify is gray in grayscale, and this represents the soft tissues. An example of this readily identified on x-ray is the heart. Very dense, naturally occurring structure within the body is cortical bone, and we can identify cortical bone readily by identifying easily seen anatomical structures such as the clavicles. 
The fourth density, which is not natural to the human body, is metal density, and we can identify these metal coils that have been inserted into this patient for treatment of vascular malformations. So some practical hints related to the grayscale of an x-ray examination. Looking at this image, we see that there's very black areas above the shoulders. This represents air that is within the room. So we can expect that the air within the lungs will also look black. We can identify the clavicles and the scapula, which are very white. The hard and soft tissues, which we can identify readily within the central portion of the x-ray, are gray. And the markers that are used to identify the location of the patient here in the left upper corner are very white because they're made of lead. So let's put this into practical use here. In this case, we see the four core grayscale densities. We see the blackness of the lungs and the blackness in the room above the patient's shoulders. We can identify the grayness of the heart centrally. We can identify the grayness of the subcutaneous fat in this area above the shoulder. We can identify the whiteness of the cortex of the clavicles and the scapula as well as the ribs. In addition, though, we can also identify very white density within the trachea and the airways within the lungs. And this happens to be barium that the patient aspirated during a upper gastrointestinal examination. In this case here, we have a patient who unfortunately had a mishap while on a hunting trip and we can identify lead shot within the subcutaneous tissues of the chest wall on the left. In addition to this, we can also identify that there are these white lines in the midline which represent metallic wires from a previous sternotomy, and we can identify that there are some changes within the left lung and the left pleural space that are secondary to the injury that the patient had from the hunting accident. So in recap, the x-ray image itself holds useful hints about grayscale and radio density. Look above the shoulders. The air in the room is black. Therefore, you can expect the air in the lungs to be black. Easily recognized bones such as the clavicles are white. The heart is soft tissue density and is gray. X-ray markers are made of lead and are very white.